from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Isn't it fantastic that the readings for today are the baptism of Jesus? And I think it all came together. God, in his wisdom, put Olivia's baptism right on the day where the lectionary set down that we would be reading about the baptism of Jesus. And we read every year in Epiphany, we hear about the baptism of Jesus, a very important part of his life, hugely important part of his ministry. In fact, the baptism of Jesus signifies the beginning of his ministry. And so um, we're going to spend a little bit of time on why Jesus was baptised and what it means to us and indeed what our own baptism means. So why don't we pray? Lord, we thank you for our own baptism. We thank you that you come to us through the water and the word. We thank you that we have eternal life. We thank you that you adopt us as your children. As we hear your word, as we meditate on your scripture, may your spirit enliven us, touch our hearts. In your name we pray. Amen. The simple answer of why Jesus was baptised is that that was his mission, to come and identify with us. Remember, at Christmas, we know that Jesus was with us. God is Emmanuel, God coming to us. And it's one thing to come to us, but the next part is to walk with us, identify with us in every possible way. And so we see that Jesus, he who was out sin, takes on sin, and that culminates in the cross. We, in baptism, exchange, if you like, our nature for Christ's, and he, in his symbolic act of allowing himself to be baptised, comes into and identifies with us, even though there was no need for him at all to be baptized remember john was preaching a baptism of repentance and it's heresy to say that jesus needed to repent he always did the will of the father perfectly and so it was his fulfillment of all righteousness meaning that he identifies with us and there's a, a wonderful story i'm sure i've told you this before but there's a guy called casper ten boom you've heard of him Maybe you haven't. In the Second World War, he was a, um, a Dutch man. And he and his family did whatever they could to save the Jews from persecution. And when the Jews in his neighborhood were forced to wear a Star of David, he said, I will wear one as well. Even though he was not Jewish, he happily sewed one on his own garment so that he could identify. These are my people. I've grown up with them. These people are my community. These people are much more important to me than just neighbours. They are, we're all joined together, and I want to identify with them in every way. And of course, well, we know that he was arrested, he was interrogated, and he died before the conclusion of the war. But it was really important to him that he identify with those people, and he let everybody know that he identified with them. And Jesus does the same thing when he is baptised. He says, I am identifying with my creation, as broken as it may be, as wayward as it may be, I am choosing to identify with my creation completely. So it's a wonderful, secure thing for us because by him identifying with us means that we get his identity. It's a natural flow on, right? He identifies with us. Our identity is the same as Jesus. And what did it say in the scripture? This is my son whom I love, with him I am pleased. So we have that same identity because Jesus identifies with us. What a beautiful thing. I don't have to worry who I am. One of life's great mysteries, and if 
You ask people some of the questions that they struggle with their entire life are, who am I and where do I belong? And in baptism, here we have one of those questions answered immediately. Who are you? You are a child of God. That's who you are. And not because you think that you are or because you're so good or because you've got some extraordinary talent. You are a child of God because God says so. Just like the voice came from the heavens that said, Jesus is the Son of God. In our baptism, God says the same thing. Our identity is set. We are children of God. Now, children of God means that we have access that we wouldn't otherwise have. We have a relationship that is different to others. We all know that is true. Think about our own children. Our own children have access to us in ways that other people could never have because they're our flesh and blood. They are ours. They're more than just other people in our life for whom we have affection. We are connected deeply. And Jesus says in baptism, we become children of God. And that makes a difference. We have our identity. Now, how we live out our identity, there is, there's a million different ways we can live that out. Each one of us has a particular calling, but at the very heart of it, we know who we are and we know what we are worth because God says who we are. God says who we are. God says, you are precious, you are loved, you are mine, this is my declaration. And that means that we approach life in a way that is different than if we weren't. Because if I know that I am a child of God, I know that God is therefore going to be active in my life. Which one of you who has children isn't active in your children's life or want to be active in your children's life. You don't just say, oh, well, our children are born, off you go. Not a chance. Once your children are here, you spend your whole life working and doing what you can to be involved in making sure that their life is okay. And I'm not saying that parents are perfect. I'm sure there are many times that my children wish I wasn't as involved. I'm sure there are many times that they say, get your nose out of my business. But as parents, as parents, we know that it's important to do what we can for our children. And there's no question that children derive security from that. So it's a different mindset. I know who I am. I'm God's child. And so when I'm faced with anything, when I'm faced with a challenge, when I'm faced with a problem, I'm not facing that as somebody who is an orphan. I'm facing that as somebody who has an identity that's given to me by God himself, which means that he is active. He's available. He's ready to join us in whatever that is. That's a beautiful thing. And I guess secondly, because I'm not going to make this a long message today, secondly, we see that Jesus, when he was baptized, there were people all around. He was baptized into a community. We too are baptized into a community. Baptism is not just something that is a personal thing. Oh, look, this person and God. We are baptized into a community. And the reason we're baptized into a community is because God knows that we don't do very well if we do life alone. We need other people around us to do life with. My mum used to always say, a problem shared is a problem halved. You've heard that expression? I don't know how true that is, but I certainly know what she meant. That when somebody is there with you, when you have a community with you in whatever you're doing, then the lows are not quite as deep. 
because it's not you hanging on your own. There are a bunch of other people that are using their strength as well to support you. And of course, when you're in community and you have a success or a victory, it's not you celebrating or me celebrating on our own. It's the entire community. And isn't it better when a community celebrates than just us individually? We know this because you see the football grand finals. People want to be together in football matches. They want to celebrate together. This is an event that we do together because on our own, it's not as satisfying. If we know that with football, it shouldn't be a very big or difficult extrapolation to say that that principle remains in every part of our life. So Jesus says, when you are baptized, we're baptized into a community. That is my gift to you. The baptism is I'm giving you my presence, I'm giving you an identity, and I'm giving you a community in which you can live and grow and prosper. These are wonderful gifts. Which one of us doesn't want to know, this is who I am and this is where I belong? And if we don't know who I am and we don't know where we belong, it's very unsettling. I've known people um, who have been searching for a community in which they belong. And, they, and once, until they find that community, it feels like that their life is not solid. It feels like they're walking on shifting sand. But once you find that place, this is the place I belong, then suddenly it's like, ah, I'm on boards or I'm on concrete. I've got something solid underneath my feet because this is where I belong. These are my people. These are the people that God has given me. So as we celebrate today Olivia's baptism, as we meditate on the baptism of Jesus and we think about our own baptism, we have much for which we are grateful. God himself declares that we are his. He gives us an identity and he gives us a community in which we can live, grow and prosper. Why don't we pray? Lord, we thank you for your amazing gift of life. We thank you that we receive our identity from you because it is your will, because it is your decree. And we thank you for the communities in which we can grow and live and do life. Thank you for this day. In your name we pray. Amen.